Antimatter based engines have long been a fixture in popular science fiction, the most well known of which is powering the warp drives in Star Trek. However, very few titles ever bother to explain how exactly this works. In reality, making anything dependent on antimatter is probably a bad idea. So what exactly is antimatter? Antimatter is, unlike what a lot of people think, not some form of unobtainium. Antimatter is exactly the same thing as regular matter, except with reverse charge and spin, and has been produced artificially for decades and naturally since matter was a thing. Whether you go for a PET scan at a hospital, which relies on receiving radiation emitted by the positron byproduct of a beta decay, or whether you see a thunderstorm which produces antimatter as a byproduct, you've been using and seeing the usefulness of antimatter your entire life. So why would you want to use antimatter as a fuel source? The only real reason, and it is a good one, is its incredible fuel to power ratios. When antimatter annihilates, all of its energy, both rest and motion, is consumed to create new particles. To keep matter simple, let's imagine a positron and electron reaction. This will produce a high energy gamma ray, which can be used to heat up the medium in a heat engine. By controlling the amount of these reactions, like how we do in a modern fission reactor, this can be used as an incredibly long lasting fuel supply. Of course, if we could do this, we would be. But there are some huge obstacles in the way of our antimatter future. Antimatter is just incredibly hard to produce in large amounts. For example, in the PET scanner I just mentioned, the radioactive dye uses only around 185 to 370 million positrons per second. Now, this may seem like a lot, but that's about 10 to the minus 25 kilograms, meaning that after about 10 billion billion seconds, you would only have produced an amount that weighs about the same as a standard bag of sugar, and that's longer than the current age of the universe. Even CERN, if dedicated to producing only antimatter, was to start making it today, it would take around a billion years to produce a single gram of the stuff. Whether we make some truly miraculous advances in technology, we don't know. But until then, making antimatter is completely out of the question. For the sake of argument, let us presume we find some way of reliably producing a reasonable amount of antimatter. The next problem is storage. In a combustion engine like that in a car, fuel is stored in what is usually a container made of some sort of strong metal and is then fed into a chamber in which the fuel source is ignited to produce energy. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but it'd take too long to explain a car properly. All that's relevant to what we're looking at is the storage device. It's basically just a fancy box. Antimatter, on the other hand, is going to annihilate the container and anything around it, immediately blowing up all of your fuel and probably yourself, and that isn't really going to get you very far. To store antimatter, you need to make electromagnetic traps, and these traps require energy to operate. To make matters worse, the most likely form of antimatter drive would be hydrogen antihydrogen, as antihydrogen is the easiest element to make, and the normal component is the most abundant element in the universe. Hydrogen is not a charged particle on regular scales, however up close it is still two separate charges, which means it very weakly interacts with electromagnetic fields. Our containment would therefore have to utilise a much stronger magnetic field than normal, and so will lower the efficiency of your engine. A further problem is that if this magnetic containment field ever fails even for a fraction of a second, like in warp core failures in Star Trek, you're going to immediately blow a massive chunk of your ship up, including your engine, which means you're never going to be able to get home or propel yourself to where you were initially trying to go. So that's pretty much the nail in the coffin for antimatter drives. Unless both of these obstacles are solved, antimatter powered chips are terribly inefficient, would take an insane amount of time to build and fuel and it'll probably kill you as soon as a part failed. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.